Welcome to week nine of the Phil Steel Plus Tour with Selection. Seven big plays up for you today. Let's hope we have a big winning week in store for you. Of course, the main purpose of this is to get you to get the most use out of the Phil Steel Plus Tour uh, each and every week, or out of Phil Steel Plus, I should say. I know a lot of you are already Phil Steel Plus members. Uh, this is the access to all the information that I use. We've been backlogging and putting up on the net for years. And now you can have access to the same amount of information that I have uh, for all the college football. And it's like getting an updated magazine during the course of the year. As you can tell here by the Alabama page, we update the things in green and red. Alabama's actually got some red numbers. You don't normally see a lot of red numbers with Alabama. You go back through the years, uh, you can take it back when you use the Phil Steel Plus uh, you go all the way back. This is every team. Takes you back to 2010. Look at the amount of red numbers for Alabama. You don't see a lot of red numbers. You've got some this year on the defensive side of the ball right up here at the top with these numbers here, but a lot of green numbers, as you know. It gives you the individual stat leaders. How big of an impact is uh, Jalen Waddell being out going to be? Well, here we see that he was out here, and uh, Smith had 73 yards. Mechie has 151. Harris had 61 out of the backfield. Bolden came in and took his place. Bolden had had a catch all year, 6 for 94 in Waddle's absence. So it looks like he's going to be the guy that takes Waddle's place as far as the receiving goes. Shows you the individual numbers for Najee Harris, 206 yards against Ole Miss. So you got to love the individual leaders that we have on each page. And updated also is the start chart. Look at this. You can tell who started each and every game. This lets you know, like you can see here, it's been a pretty stable offensive line for Alabama this year. You can see the teams that are beat up on the offensive line by the starters. You can see uh, defensively uh, who's been starting, who has not been starting, and that's on every team. You get the start charts, the individual stats, the last 40 years leaders. Look at that, all the way back to 1976. You want any spread on any game since 1976, score of any game since 1976. And then what we started doing here was in 2004, we started putting in the uh, half times, which are vital. So you've got half times all the way back to 2004 on every game. And then Vegas started putting totals on every game in 2003. Part of that was only TV games. And they only started about here in 98, 99. They started with these totals. Now they do them on every single game, but you have got totals history on every game since 2003. And this also tells you who the coaches were, Bill Curry, Gene Stallings, uh, Mike DeBose, Francione, Shula, uh, and then, of course, Nick Saban. And once Saban took over, he took over a 6-7 and seven team that went 7-6. and six. It's been pretty much double-digit wins every year since. All this information on all 130 teams, not just Alabama, you know, we could go back here and take a look at the FCS team pages and go to a team like Florida Atlantic, which has not been uh, FCS all the way back 40 years. And as you can see, when they started playing back, we got their Division One AA stats in 2001. Who their coach has been each team, they didn't even have a team. Schnellenberger brought them in. All this information at your fingertips, every single team, where they finished in each thing. They played in the Sun Belt. Then they went to CUSA. They went to the CUSA in this year. Uh, Carl Pelini uh, got fired, and they went to uh, Brian Wright the second half, then it was Partridge, then Lane Kiffith, then Taggart, and also Stats dating back that far as well. So all 130 teams covered. The, make sure you get your maximum use out of your team pages. And one thing I'd like to tell you, if you would like to join Phil Steel Plus and get it for the year, uh, go to Phil Steel Plus right here. It's normally uh, $69 for the year. The current price is $54. But with this code, Plus Tour 20, when you purchase Phil Steel Plus, you see it says 54, you can get it for $49 right now. 49 bucks. Use the code word Plus Tour 20. You just go to the store at philsteel.com. And at the store at philsteel.com, this is what it looks like. There's your magazines up top. But take click on Phil Steel Plus, click this in, type in the code word Plus Tour 20, and get it for 49 bucks for the rest of the year. 49 bucks gets you that. All right, let's get some selections, huh? Let's start off with some selections here this week, and we're going to take a look at my red-green game of the week, and it's uh, Western Kentucky on the left because they're the visitor. And Western Kentucky is actually 0-6 against the spread this year. That's pretty remarkable in itself. They have been a disappointing team. Meanwhile, we're going to put BYU on the right, and BYU is a team that has not been disappointing. They've been a buzzsaw. I talk about red and green numbers. Look at all the red numbers over here. West Kentucky's offense averaging 277 yards per game. BYU's 
547. Now, when you look at these team pages, something you should look at every week is over here, which is what you do against your opponent averages. Now, when I show that BYU is 184 yards above what Navy's uh, opponents normally get, that means if you take this 184 and subtract it off the 580, that's basically 396 yards is what Navy's allowing when they don't play BYU. They gave up 580 yards when they play BYU. BYU had a number one, uh, the top performance against Navy's defense, number one against Troy's defense, number one against Louisiana Tech's defense, number one against Houston's, number one against Texas State. So they have got season highs against five of the six teams they took on. Not quite sure what happened with UTSA. Only 470 yards, number three. But as you can tell, they've been dominant defensively. Number one, number one, number two, number two, number two. And on the season, BYU 173 yards per game. Four are above opponent averages, holding opponents to 109 yards below their season average. Western Kentucky, you got all this red over here. They're minus 58 and minus 15. I want to show you one quick thing here. When you go to the uh, homepage and you click on the FBS info, we got all this stuff up here. The offensive and defensive average YPG, I'll, I'll post this one on uh, my Twitter account, 042 today. BYU's number one, plus 173, plus 108, add them together, plus 281. Clemson comes in at number two. Now, granted, Clemson's played a tougher schedule. Not trying to say BYU's a better team, but it's an interesting stat. App State's up here. Look at that. Alabama's up here, as you would expect. Notre Dame, Oklahoma State. And how about San Jose? Now, keep in mind, the teams that have played one game or just two games, they're going to be up there higher. When the average is way out, they'll probably drop as the season goes on. So keep that in mind. But West Virginia's up here at number 12. Uh, do check those out each and every week. And check them out on your team pages whenever you're breaking down a game. So once again, whenever I break down a game, I put the visitor on the left, the home team on the right, as you can tell, BYU is a far more dominant team. 0-6 versus 5-1 against the spread. You got the YPG going for you. And last week, if you follow this Chattanooga game, very disappointing game there, uh, they actually uh, took the lead late. 13-10, they got the lead. Let me see. Oh, box score is not up there. I could show you, but... Um, the, uh, for the Chattanooga game last week. They take the lead 13-10. They give up a kick return touchdown and lose the game 17-13. But they review it, and they say one of the up men raised his arm, and they called it a fair catch. Took away the kick return touchdown. West Kentucky managed to beat Chattanooga, a team they should have beat comfortably. Very disappointed with how West Kentucky's playing. BYU's buzz saw on everybody. The line's 28 and a half. Look at the average game grades, and I use these – very much. Now, an average game grade, not only is the score of the game, but it also counts for the yards rushing, yards passing, uh, both uh, offense and defense, and then your opponent, who'd you play, who you played. So, you know, uh, if you played a strong team, and it, let's take a look at the, here, BYU only had a 40-yard edge against Houston, but that was a 107 grade because Houston's a pretty doggone good team. They had a 111-yard edge against UTSA, but that was only a 93-yard edge. So even a better grade for Houston, even though the yardage was not uh, as good, because it takes into account the opponent that they played. So anyway, if you look at BYU this year, they are playing at 112 level. Western Kentucky's playing at a 76 level. Add that up. BYU should win the game by 38.9. That makes the 28.5 cheap. I'm taking BYU. I'm laying the 28 and a half. They've been playing great. They have not. They're 0-6. Take BYU minus 28 and a half over West Kentucky as my red-green game of the week. Now, on press box, press box has been doing quite well. You look at the last two weeks, uh, press box has gone 11 and 5, 68.8%. The NFL plays on the year, 9 and 5, 64%. Do want to remind you if you type in the code word football is back. Once again, you go to the Phil Steele store. You just click on the store over here. And uh, when you click on the store, there it is. You get your press box. You can get a weekly edition for 20 bucks. You can get the season edition here for the college for 109. You could get the NFL in college for 199 for the season or the NFL for a 109. But if you type in the code word football is back, take 20 bucks off. So this is not 109 anymore. It's 89 for the rest of the regular season in college. It's 89 for the rest of the regular season for the NFL. And when you get the bundle, which is this one up here, 
It's normally $199, but with the bundle, you not only get the college regular season, the NFL regular season, you get the postseason, which is $89, and I believe there will be 44 bowl games this year. You get Phil Steele Plus included, so that's an automatic. And then if you purchased all four with Phil Steele Plus, it's $361 normally. We discount it to $199. Type in Elite Member at that one. I'm going to give you 50 bucks off. You can take it all the way down to 149. So you can get my college press box, which gives you my computer's forecast on every game, my complete write-up on every game, whole bunch of stats. You get my NFL, which gives you my computer's forecast, my write-up. You get the postseason. You get Phil Steele Plus. You get it all for just 149. Make sure you check it out. But use these code words. Football is back. Gives you 20 bucks off here. Elite member gives you 50 bucks off the bundle. Make sure you get there, it right there. And uh, let's go to my high-scoring game of the week. I brought that up because my high-scoring week game of the week has not been doing well on press box. Even if you include last week it lost, so there would have been eleven and four up here. But no, unfortunately, it's eleven and five uh, over the last two weeks. Sixty-five point five or sixty-eight point five percent because the high-scoring game did not win. So I'm going to move the high-scoring game here to Phil Steele Plus, give you my reasoning for it, and we'll see if we can't change the luck. Yeah, I'm a little superstitious. Hey, if you're a gambler, you're superstitious, and so I'm superstitious in that respect. Let's take a look at SMU against Navy. Navy's the visitor. SMU's the home team. It's my high-scoring game of the week. This would have been the high-scoring game of the week on Press Box. I'm moving it here because we need that thing to start winning, so let's get a win here this week. Let's look at SMU's offense. They are a pure over team. They average 62 yards per game above opponent averages, 518 yards per game. Look at all the red here on defense, 427 yards per game. They are an over team. Navy's defense is an over. I mean, they get, look at the red here that they've been giving up all year. They're minus six. Now, their offense hasn't been doing well, but I want to show one thing about the series history here. When you go to a team and all you have to do is click right here, and it will give you your complete 23 years matchups on every single game. Look at this defense of SMU against Navy. They don't stop it. 378 yards rushing, 349, 559, 496, 403. You go back over the last five years, the Navy option has rushed for 437 yards per game, 6.5 yards per carry, and look what they've put up in these games, 35, 30, 43, 75, 55. They're averaging 47.6 points per game. Now, you know SMU should be able to get 38, 40 points at least in this game. They do it against everybody. Navy's defense is nothing nothing special. So let's the total in the game is 58.5. You figure SMU is going to get 38 or 40. Based on the series history, how they've done against the Navy option, and they've only had the one week to prepare for the option. They're coming off a physical game against Cincinnati. I don't know if they can slow down Navy's option because they haven't in the past. you got to figure this thing goes over 58.5 points. So history, SMU's offense, situation, it's all there. I haven't had a lot of success with these on press box, so I'm moving it here. My high-scoring game of the week, we're going to take SMU Navy to go over 58.5 Figuring SMU gets about 40, you know Navy should do easily to get over 20 in this one. Take SMU Navy over 58 and a half as your second selection this week. Well, let's go to your overreaction game of the week. And we're going to take a look at Penn State against Ohio State. Now, if you look, uh, one of the things we put up here on philsteel.com, and I'll go to the homepage for a second here, is the Vegas power ratings. Now, these are the legitimate ones. They're not the ratings that... F- go, oh, this team beat that team, so I have to rank them higher like the AP does. No, it's different. And if you look at the Vegas Power Ratings last week, Ohio State's at 137 and Penn State's at 128. You had three points for the home for the home edge. Ohio State's a six-point favorite, and I think Ohio State would have been a three- to six-point favorite. But Penn State lost last week, and Ohio State blew out Nebraska. Now, all of a sudden, by the way, I should put Ohio State on the left because they're the visitor. Put Ohio State over here. I'm going to put Penn State on the right because they're a home team. So let's click on that. FBS team pages. Penn State on the right. Penn State over here. There we go. Okay, we got Penn State on the right, Ohio State on the left. Now they lost. All of a sudden, Ohio State's a 12-point road favorite. Now a couple things I want to point out. Penn State lost last week. I just watched that game again last night. Penn State had a 488 to 211-yard edge. 
Penn State missed not one, not two, but three field goals. They turned the ball over three times. They got stopped on downs on the one and had their running back. And let me see if the box, the box is not updated. Uh, Todd will have that box updated for you. But Penn State was up by one at the end of the game with uh, under two minutes to go. Had their running back just got the first down and went to a knee, they run out the clock. Penn State wins the game by one. He runs into the end zone for a touchdown. Penn State's up by eight. Indiana goes down, gets a touchdown, gets a two-point conversion, then gets a controversial two-point conversion in overtime. Add it all up. Somehow, some way, Penn State lost that game. It's the same solid Penn State team they were coming into the year. In fact, if you look at the Vegas Power Ratings for this week, which is up right now on um, philsteel.com, let's go take a look at that. Vegas Power Ratings right here. Here's your post. Uh, Penn State is still the number seven team in the country. So they're not that bad of a team. They're still thought of highly. They outplayed Indiana in every aspect of the game. You don't end up with the uh, edge of uh, 488 to 211 without dominating the game. Now they're a 12-point dog to to Ohio State. Interestingly, I was doing a show on College Sports Now, and I was brought up that uh, Penn State hasn't covered as a home dog against Ohio State. And I said, well, not so fast. All I do is click right here. Penn State's covered the last four. Here's how this works. Do you see the red numbers here? That means that you won or lost the game. So that you can see Penn State has lost the last three. The green numbers here means whether or not you covered the game. So home against Ohio State, they covered. Home against Ohio State, they covered. Home against Ohio State, they've covered. They've covered the last three at home, even won one outright. They've covered the last four in the series. And look at the scores, 11 points, 1 point, 1 point, 3 points. So in the last four years, since James Franklin has got this Penn State team built, they've played Ohio State within 11 points each time, but most of it within one score. Now Penn State's getting 12. Now I'll say this. I picked Ohio State to win the national championship in my magazine. I want Ohio State to win this game. But if you look at all the games that Ohio State plays the rest of the year, this is the one I'm worried about the most. Penn State's got the series history going for them. They're a very good team. And this is a misleading score right here. Uh, And Ohio State's defense didn't impress me last week. Look, they gave up 217 yards rushing uh, to Nebraska. That concerns me a little bit. 377 total yards they gave up in that game. Uh, I'm saying the overreaction game, Penn State should be a 3-6 to six point dog. They're getting 12 this week. I think it's going to be a tight game. I do think Ohio State wins and escapes. Hopefully they do. Got them picked number one in the magazine. But we're going to take Penn State plus the 12 as my overreaction game of the week. Speaking of overreactions, I have heard nothing but Greg Schiano has turned the Rutgers program around. Guys, I got to tell you, Rutgers is not turned around. They beat a poor Michigan State team last week. They benefited from plus four in turnovers. Michigan State turned the ball over seven times. They out get, got out gained 369 uh, to 276. And even though Indiana got outplayed by Penn State, Penn State is a much different team than Rutgers. Rutgers and Michigan State are the two bottom teams in the Big Ten this year, along with Maryland, the three bottom teams. Penn State and Ohio State are among the elite in the country. Now, somehow, someway, Indiana beat Penn State. Indiana's got tons of talent. And I'm going to take you back to 2018. They came, uh, Penn State came into Indy, or to, um, excuse me, Indiana went to Rutgers and dominated the game. They're up 24 to 7. I thought it was 24 nothing at one point. No, just 24 7 at the half. You can click right here and get the box score on each game, by the way. Going back the last 10 years. You want the box score on any game the last 10 years? See how it was played? It's all right there. They let up in the second half, and actually it got to be a 24 17 game because they let up in the second half. As you can tell here by looking at the halftime, they had a 292 to 134 yard edge at the half. So Tom Allen can, first of all, go into the film room this week and preach to his team hey, you didn't play very well. You may have won the game last week, but let's not go patting yourselves on the back. You got out game by 277 yards. Now, coming in, I thought Indiana was at least two touchdowns better than Rutgers. They beat Penn State. They lived up to that potential. Uh, I think they still are well over two touchdowns. They're only laying 10 points here, guys. 10 points because Rutgers beat Michigan State, and uh, they're figuring it is a flat spot. Now, it is a bit of a flat spot because they got Michigan on deck, but if I'm Tom Allen, first of all, I say, look, you were minus 277 yards last week. Quit patting yourself on the back. Let's look at the film. Secondly, if you lose this game, it means nothing that you beat Penn State. All that work you put into Penn State means nothing. And the third thing is, 
Uh, Rutgers is really a team that's going to struggle this year. They got outgained by a poor Michigan State team last week. They will struggle. The spread's all the way down at 10 in this one. Uh, last week, Indiana would have been an 18-point favorite. Now the spread is 10. I'm going to take Indiana, minus 10 over Rutgers, as your fourth play this week. So we got four plays locked in. Let's go ahead and get another one locked in this week as we try to take a look. And uh, we're going to take a look at Texas A&M and Arkansas. And this is one where I'm saying get in early. We may just start putting a Texas A&M here on the right each week because I think they're a team that's continuing to grow. They struggled at the opener. They got blown out by Bama. They beat Florida. And then they dominated Mississippi State. And if you look at the box scores, and these box scores that we have here are beautiful. I go through the play-by-play -play of every game, and then I try to watch as many games. I watch 12 games all day long. You see my pictures that I uh, tweet out on uh, Twitter, naturally, where I show the picture of the 12 games we got going on. And then I try to watch as many games individually and listen to the each each word, you know, and what the what the reporters got or what the announcers got, I should say, from interviewing the coaches during the week. Well, if you watch A and M Mississippi State game, it's twenty eight to seven. Mississippi State got a late drive in the fourth quarter here. And if you go into play by play, let's go ahead and take a look at the play by play in the fourth quarter. It was twenty eight to fourteen, but A and M beat Mississippi State much worse than that. Are we in the fourth quarter yet? Yeah, here's the fourth quarter. All right, so it's uh, Mississippi State goes and gets that drive for the touchdown. AM ends the game at the Mississippi State one yard line. So you could, if they score this touchdown, if Smith runs into the end zone for a touchdown from the one yard line, it's a 35 to 14 game. And if they don't give up this garbage drive here in the fourth quarter, it, it would have been 28 to 7 prior to that. So, I mean, it literally, they beat them by 21. AM's running the football well. Look at Arkansas's red numbers right here. They gave up 6.3 and 4.6, about 250 yards per game rushing last two weeks. I think AM will be able to run the ball with Spiller and Smith. Take a look at the individual stats. You see that Smith's starting to get the ball a little bit more, and Spiller's starting to be dominant. He only had 25 yards against Bama, but can be dominant. Arkansas can give up the yards rushing here. Arkansas's offense, 347 yards this year, 59 below what opponents are allowing. And AM's defense doing pretty well. They played Alabama, gave up 544, but that was 28 below their season average. They're holding opponents to 88 yards below their season average. So if they hold Arkansas to 88 below their season average, they get about 260. If they get 59 below their season average, that's about 300. So that's about Arkansas getting 280. I think a and going to get enough here. There's a lot of talk. Arkansas might be the second best team in the SEC West. a and is going to prove they are. And here's what I wanted to point out and the reason that I'm saying get on the train early. If they get past Arkansas this week, they play South Carolina next week, they'll be favored. They'll be favored at Tennessee. They'll be favored against Ole Miss. They'll be favored against LSU at home. And then if they can beat Auburn on the road, and Auburn, if they didn't get three referee calls, might be 0-5 at this point. Uh, you take a look at a and they've got a chance to run on the table. And if they do, they might just be that number four playoff team. So keep your eyes on Texas A&M. No one's talking about them in the playoffs but come November and December, they may be talking about them in the playoffs. It's my get on the train early play. Take Texas A&M minus 12 and a half over Arkansas. All right, I've showed you how to use the box scores. I've showed you how to use the team pages, the start chart, the individual stats, the last 40 years results. You can even get the last 20 years leaders here if you want on these things. Uh, they's got them all. It'll be updated to 19 pretty soon. The draft history. You want to know any player drafted since the draft began in 1933, I believe it was, or 38. I'm not sure. But way back then, we've got all the draft picks there. All that's available at your fingertips right here on every page for every team. Now I'm going to go completely off the board and go give you my eye test game of the week. And it's two things where the computer and the numbers might say that the line's legitimate. Virginia's getting seven from North Carolina. But I've watched these two teams play this year. Brennan Armstrong throws everything off his back foot. Unimpressed with his throwing motion. Lindell Stone's basically a walk-on quarterback. Uh, and they've got a couple of running quarterbacks with Armstead and then Keaton Thompson. But they alternate four quarterbacks. They really don't have a good passing quarterback. And their offense is struggling. I mean, last year they had the magician, Bryce Perkins. Perkins could hurt you passing. He could hurt you running. He was the offense last year. In fact, by far the leading rusher by far the passer and the offense. This year they're averaging uh, nine, they're averaging about what their opponent allows, but I've been unimpressed with their offense. 23, 21, 23, and 14 points. Against Duke, they got all these turnovers. Four turnovers helped them get to the 38 points. Meanwhile, North Carolina's offense, wow. 
You got Michael Carter. You got Javante Williams at running back. Let's go take a look at these guys and their individual stats. Each one a threat to the top 100 yards in each game. Sam Howell can hurt you running. Passing, you got Deami Brown, Bo Corrales, Williams out of the backfield, Daz Newsome. They've got threats all around. North Carolina's got a dynamic offense, one that's averaging 100 yards per game above what their opponents normally allow. They're putting points on the board. Now, defensively, these two teams are close. But look, North Carolina's giving up 375 yards per game, Virginia 420. Who, are you telling me Virginia's a better defense? They're holding opponents 11 yards below their season average. They're holding them 11. I'm saying the defenses, let's call them even. Offensive, big edge in North Carolina. I know the game's on the road. I know it's in North Carolina. If you look at the average game grades, they say that Virginia's playing at a 98, add the three-point home edge, 101. These guys are at 108. That's only a seven-point edge. So I understand when a line is seven. But my eyes tell me North Carolina's offense is much better than Virginia. I'm going to take North Carolina. I'm going to lay the seven on the road this week. It's my eye test game. Take North Carolina minus seven over Virginia. There's six college games. We won you an NFL game last week. The NFL and Press Box have been doing well at 9-5. and five. Let's win you an NFL game this week, and let's show you what the NFL team pages have. When you click on the NFL team pages, you get this. Now, one thing I want to show you on the home page for the NFL is when you click here, uh, you can get the offensive strength of wins. This tells you that Kansas City has defeated opponents that have beaten 17 teams. Pittsburgh has defeated opponents of 16 teams right down the line. I find that fascinating in itself. And naturally, the Jets are down here. They haven't won a game. Houston has beaten a team that's won one game. Cincinnati's beaten a team that's won one game. Uh, let's see if anybody down here, look at this. Jacksonville's beaten a team that's won four games. That's why they're up here. Uh, New England's beaten teams that have won six games, and that's that I find fascinating. Also in the NFL info is the offensive yards per game. Tampa Bay, New Orleans, Rams, San Francisco, all at the top. Indianapolis is up here at number 11. This week they are taking on Detroit, who's all the way down here at, minus, at number 23. You've got a team that's out in the opponent averages by 25 yards per game. Detroit at minus 31.9. So that information is available to you on philsteel.com. But let's go take a look at the team pages. Oops, that's FBS. Let's take a look at the NFL team pages this week. Now, Detroit's at home. I'm going to put them on the right. And Indianapolis on the road, I'm going to put them on your left. And Indianapolis comes into this game about a two-and-a-half-point favorite. I feel Indianapolis is a playoff team. Look at this defense. They're giving up 288 yards per game this year. That's a legitimate defense. They're holding opponents this year uh, to 57 yards per game below their season average. Detroit's defense giving up 381 yards per game. They're allowing opponents seven yards above their season average this year. Large edge on defense to Indianapolis. Now, Phillip Rivers needs to cut down the interception. 7-6 ratio, not going to cut it. I think he will improve. Uh, Jonathan Taylor's running the football well uh, so far. Let's see what he's been doing recently. Jonathan Taylor, 60, 57, 68. But uh, I think that Jonathan Taylor, the former uh, Wisconsin Badger, 367 yards rushing, gives them a, a solid uh, running back. And, of course, they've got some dangerous threats at receiver and a big edge on the defense. Also, I think Indianapolis, uh, the stronger team. In fact, let's take a look at something here. We'll take a look at the team pages from the workbook. Uh, as you, you know, I publish a workbook as well. You can get that on philseal.com uh, or go to the store there and get the workbook. But if we take a look at Indianapolis and how they do in non-conference games, uh, let's get them against the spread in non-conference, see if I've got that. Non-division, non-division. I uh, don't think I have any. What we've got for Indianapolis is the fact that they um, they do well on the road. Let's see what they are as a road favorite. Way favorite non-division, 1-0. and Two and zero. Well, two and zero is a way favorite in non-division games the last two years. That's not that great. Let's go look at the Detroit page for some information here as a home dog. Take a look at Detroit as a home dog. Three and four, two and three, one and three, one and one, zero oh and four. And add in this year, Detroit as a home dog is just eight, nineteen and one against the spread. Indianapolis is thirteen, six and one against the spread versus the NFC. Nine and five as an away favorite. And Let's go back to that Indianapolis page for a minute. Frank Reich is a 2-0 and off a of bye. They're off a of bye. You've got the Colts off a of bye. If you look down here, here's the bye week. They beat Houston 30-23. to Off a of bye week, they beat Jacksonville 29-23. So Reich is 2-0 and off a of bye. They're a legitimate playoff team, much better defense. Detroit's coming off a game where they got lucky against Atlanta. Atlanta could have 
settled, played it safe, taken a field goal, won the game. In fact, they scored a touchdown, and they weren't really trying to score a touchdown. And then that opened the door for Detroit to rally down, come down the field, score a touchdown, and pull out the win in that game. They just played two of the weakest teams in the NFL, and Jacksonville and Atlanta came out with wins. Uh, but prior to that, they were a 1-3 squad. I don't think Detroit's a playoff team. I think Indianapolis is. Indianapolis is plus 75 yards per game right here. Detroit is minus 26 yards per game. And basically, they just have to win the game. Now, it's in a dome, right? Well, Indianapolis plays in a dome. Not much not much of a home crowd, if any. Indianapolis used to play in domes, off a bye. Playoff team versus non-playoff team. I'm going to take the Indianapolis Colts, and I'm going to take them minus the 2.5 over Detroit this week. If you want to know the series history, let's go take a look here. You can click on Detroit. You see that the Colts have won three of the last four games in the series history. Uh, that the home team right here is 0-4 against the spread, which makes sense. you got a dome team against a dome team, so the normal dome advantage isn't there. The visitor has covered four in a row in the series, so I like that advantage as well. All this information, you look at the NFL, you go all the way down there. Last 10 years information, color-coded red and green. The Colts have done extremely well under Frank Reich. They've made the playoffs. Uh, I think that this is a playoff team versus a non-playoff team. You're laying two and a half. You're off a bye, catching the other team off a tight win. So add it all up. We're going to take the Indianapolis Colts minus two and a half as your seventh selection. So hopefully we've showed you how to use Phil Steele Plus. And hopefully, now last week the FBS plays and NFL plays combined to go two and two. I'm still waiting for that big breakout week. we got seven plays up here. Let's have that big breakout week this week, guys. Uh, enjoy watching football. Hey, the Pac-12 is actually going to start next week. The Mountain West started last week. The MAC starts next week as well. So we're going to have uh, all one, 127 of 130 teams playing. And just thank God we're playing football this year. So I think that covers everything. Yes, it does. I've touched on everything. You have yourself a great weekend. And let's get some winners this week, guys.